Hello and welcome to Pez Fan TV for Jim and Jay's final say combined for Bournemouth and Swansea. I'm Jim Daly. Uh, these are my thoughts on those games. Firstly, Merry Christmas. Hope everyone had a great Christmas and got all the presents you wanted. Um, I'm assuming most of them were Palace themed. Um, I actually didn't get any. Oh, I got one. I got a little uh, Marouane Schimak bobble head thing, uh, which is good. Um, Going to start my collection off there. Try and get all of them. Um, but I also went to Bournemouth as well for Christmas, sort of, sort of Christmas present to myself. Um, so I'll start off with the Bournemouth game. Well, both games were nil-nil, so zero goals over Christmas. My brother moved to Dublin about six months ago. And he came back for Christmas. I bought him a ticket to the Bournemouth game for his, his Christmas present. So he came to that. Uh, and then he came to Swansea as well. Um, didn't see a single goal. So uh, Merry Christmas, Seb. Um, but two frustrating games, really. And, and definitely two games that have shown how far we've come. Because we probably would have expected to win both games. Um, but still two clean sheets. Two points. The unbeaten run continues. We're still fifth in the league. So it's obviously not not terrible at all. You know, We end, we end the year in a European spot, which is ridiculous given that we started the year in the bottom three. Um, so it's been a fantastic year for Palace, arguably one of our best ever years as a club, possibly our best ever, I would say, but that's for another video. Um, so Bournemouth, um, I think 0-0 is probably a fair result. I mean, both games really, not not massive amounts of quality, not massive amounts of chances. Um, Bournemouth game, we only really had two chances. One was uh, Delaney from a corner that was sort of cleared off the line by a defender, and then Shamak at the end from a soiree cross that was sort of poked towards his keeper, but uh, an easy save, really. Bournemouth probably had the best chances. Richie had a header in the first half that he definitely should have scored from. Uh, but other than that, it was it was fairly solid. I mean, Kabaya started on the bench and then came on at half-time. We really do miss him when he's not playing. It was the same way at Stoke. We just struggled to hold on to the ball a little bit. But as soon as he came on in the second half, we just looked a bit more sort of calm and uh, started to play it around a bit better and just looked a bit more sort of confident. Um, Still couldn't really create those chances. I mean, we missed Wickham, who's injured, and Balassi, who's injured for both games. And it's amazing. Just those two players out, we look so much less of a threat going forward. And we'll talk about how, how good our squad is in depth at the moment. And it is better than it's been for a long time, possibly ever. But it needs to be even better, really. Especially if we're talking about Europe next season. And I don't think we'll get into Europe. But, you know, just two injuries. And suddenly we look a lot less potent going forward. Um, Campbell ran his socks off against Bournemouth, but doesn't have the quality. Jordan March was not very good at all, I don't think, but was better against uh, Swansea. Um, so it's just, I think both games have really th sh shone a light on the fact that we do need some more players. And I think we'll see some more players come in January, especially up front. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. The last point from Bournemouth, I think, was, was Harry Arter's foul on Zaha, which wasn't even shown on match of the day, but it was... To be honest, at the time, it looked like it was right in front of us. The away fans looked like a red card, really. Uh, and then on replay reflection, still looks like a red card to me. It was reckless. It was from behind. Didn't get the ball. It, it could have been, you know, a serious injury to Wilf. Wilf reacted. Uh, I don't think he got booked, but probably shouldn't. Again, against Swansea, who got fouled a lot. And he seems to keep reacting. And really, they're not, you know, fouls in your position are compliments, really, because they think that you're too good to play against. So they're trying to foul you. So Wolf's got to get to le learn to deal with that because that's going to happen throughout his career. Um so Arthur should have been sent off, but um, you know, other than that, I think it was a fair result. And Glenn Murray, of course, got cheered by the Palace fans uh, before the game, uh, did a little dive, booed by the Palace fans during the game, and then when he went off, subbed, cheered again. So um, that's the pantomime of football. Swansea at home, um, we should have won this one, really. Uh, they came and played very defensive, like the Sunderland game. Um, we had quite a few chances, not really clear-cut, apart from Bamford's at the end, best chance of the game, hit it straight at the keeper, really frustrating um, and then after the game declared that he was cancelling his loan deal and was going back to Chelsea, you think if he'd have scored that goal, it could, could all be different. He could be the match winner, he'd be staying, he'd be happy. As it is, he said it was terrible, his time at Palace and he's leaving. So it's funny how one little one chance can change everything. Um, but yeah, he should have scored, really, and it hasn't really worked out for him at Palace. hasn't really got a lot of chances, but when he has, as on you know yesterday against Swansea, the, the cup game against Shrewsbury, hasn't really... Um, proved himself unfortunately but maybe Palace wasn't the team for him I think maybe he needs to go to a different team um, uh, where he needs to play more probably didn't expect Palace to be doing so well this season to be honest when he joined um, but as it is he goes back to a team uh, languishing down the bottom of the table so good luck to him at Chelsea um, again though against Swansea we missed Wickham and Balassi uh, Wilf had a better game much had a better game when he came on um, Shamak started up front n nice little flicks and, and touches and stuff but didn't really get into the game so 
I don't know, I think we're going to see some strikers coming in January. One, possibly two, now that Bamford's gone, because um, Wickham's out probably till the end of January, it sounds like. So, um, But the rest of our team is still solid. Hennessy's been good in goal, made some good saves. Good save from Sigerson at the end. Our defence is solid. You know, um, Kabai, MacArthur, fine. Jednak had a fantastic game. Man of the match for me against Swansea. So the rest of our team is doing fine. It's just up front we need to uh, click a bit more. But I'd rather it was that way round than the other way round than we were conceding lots of goals. Um, so there you go. Those are my thoughts on the Christmas games. Hope you had a wonderful Christmas. Um, have a brilliant New Year's Eve, whatever you choose to do. We'll see you in the new year for the, the Chelsea game. Um, so, yeah, keep it Palace. Keep it Palace. Who says that? Anyway, have a great New Year. And uh, here's Jay from the Eagles Beak with his thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe for these videos. Comment below with your thoughts on the Bournemouth and Swansea game. Who was man of the match? Um, for me, it was MacArthur at Bournemouth and uh, Jednak at uh, Swansea. And uh, that's it. Follow, oh, follow us on Instagram and uh, Snapchat because I'm doing snaps from every away game this season. Uh, so that's it. Have a great New Year's. See you again soon. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back to Palace Fan TV. This is Jim and Jay's final say. First one after Christmas. So I hope you all had a great Christmas. And uh, we're, as we're heading to the new year, we're going to have a look back at the last two games for Palace over Christmas. And it was quite a mean, mean couple of games for Palace, really. No goals conceded. Um, Great defensive performances in both games, away at Bournemouth and at home to Swansea City. Um, but no goal scored either. Um, we had chances in both games. Our first touch on the Bournemouth game, tough trip away from home really. No easy games in the Premier League, contrary to what some fans believe. Um, suffering through some injuries, so uh, we started Fraser Campbell and Jordan Much. And I you know, find it uh, hard to believe that we're going to um, find much better players to to, to sit on a Palace bench um, effectively so when we have injuries we need squad players which is exactly what Fraser Campbell and uh, and Jordan much are um, not a great first half for, for much in that uh, um, and, and you kind of think that these players would jump at a chance and, and, and do everything to impress in uh, you know in games such as this when they get an opportunity which is few and far between particularly for Jordan much Fraser Campbell's relatively lively, uh, unlucky with a chance which deflected over uh, over the crossbar. Jordan Much had a couple of fleeting uh, glimpses of what he could do for us. He, he's strong on the ball, I have to say. Doesn't get pushed off very easily, but uh, it wasn't a great half from him. Um, tough side, Bournemouth. Played very well against us. Showed exactly what they've done in recent games, you know, beating the likes of Chelsea uh, and Manchester United. And, uh, you know, we come away with a... For me, I think it's a good point at this time of year, suffering from injuries, not our first choice 11 out. Um, rode our luck a little bit in the game. Delaney was unlucky with an effort which uh, which beat the keeper, cleared off the line. Um, so, yeah, a goalless draw on the south coast, perhaps not what we were expecting. Yeah, expecting a little bit more, maybe we were expecting too much sometimes. For me, good point away from home. And then we move on to Swansea game. Again, struggling with injuries, not our first choice but not making excuses we've got a large squad um, and I fully expect us to uh, take advantage of the tran January transfer window and, and bring in a couple of new faces we might see a few faces uh, you know leave Salah's part but that's uh, that's yet to be seen the big news is after the Swansea game is Patrick Bamford um, he had the second half against uh, Swansea he was given 45 minutes um, and unfortunately I don't want to touch on it too much but he's I think he needs a little bit more media training. I wish him well for the future. It just hasn't worked out for, for him and, and us, really. Um, in terms of striker position, we need a striker to be scoring goals. He hasn't had the chances he was expecting to get. Um, and it's probably only right that he ends up going back to Chelsea and uh, secures another loan move, perhaps to a championship side even. But uh, uh, maybe he's not quite ready for a Premier League. But again, wish him well. There were fleeting glimpses for him uh, in the second half. But... For me, doesn't appear to have the hunger. Maybe he's not that kind of player on the pitch. You know, he, he's had a few chances. He's come on to substitute. I think he, I think his best spell was away at Leicester. Actually, when he came on, twenty minutes um, is is that long enough for a striker to really um, impress? I'm not sure. Um, he had a couple of games in the, in the cup, but um, yeah, it's a shame it's worked out the way it has. But you know, good luck to him in the future. Um, no hard feelings at all. I wanted it to work. I really did because he had a great spell at Borough last season. Um, but yeah, looking at the game, I think their first half, Palace, uh, Palace edged it. Um, went at Swansea quite uh, quite early on, and, and you know it was that elusive goal, wasn't it? Really, um, 
we do struggle sometimes at home to break teams down. Swansea are struggling at the moment. No manager, caretaker manager in at the moment. Um, strong side, Ashley Williams at the back, and I think it says a lot when some of the ratings going around the media suggest that um, Ashley Williams and a couple of defenders were were the best players on you know on the pitch in in terms of ratings. Again, we struggled to break them down. Shamak had a, had forty five minutes. Don't think he was fully fit to take you know to to, to play the whole ninety. Um, James McCarthy looked tired. Uh, again, I'm I'm coming up with excuses. It's not excuses. It's you know. I think it's a, a decent point. A shame we couldn't get the win um, against uh, against a struggling Swansea side. Although they do have quality. I mean, the second half they show when they brought Key and Sigurdsson on, um, it caused us a few more problems. And you know, Wayne Hennessy stepped up and, and preserved uh, preserved the point for us in the end. A fantastic save from him. Really is great to have a keeper that you can rely on in, in the back line. He's pulling off some of these saves in, in, in each game that we play. Did a couple against Bournemouth, another great one with from a free kick from Sigurdsson. Sigurdsson, from his reaction, thought it was in um, you know, to win the game for them all three points, which probably would have been a travesty because I think you know, neither team did enough to win the game. Um, both, I think we looked a little bit, like I say, I think we look a bit jaded. Um, bit of impetus. I mean, Jednak came in, had a great game, I thought. Uh, in the middle, um, goodbye. Another bo- another booking for him, which means he misses the Chelsea game. But uh, you know we've got a few days until then, a few days rest to uh, um, to get over some of the knocks that we've had. Delaney missed the game. He had a knock at, at Bournemouth, but uh, was fantastic against Bournemouth. And I, I think Hang Lang stepped in and, and played really well. So I think we ha- do have some strength in depth in places, but um, something to improve on in January, hopefully. So um, so yeah, thanks for watching. By all means, share our videos, subscribe to Palace Fan TV on YouTube and uh, leave your comments on you know, your thoughts on both of these two games, which no goes to report, but no goals uh, led in either. So it's uh, uh, two tough games to perhaps talk about. But uh, but yeah, we, we look ahead to, to Chelsea now and see what we can do against a, a struggling uh, Australian champions as, as they are. So uh, we'll see what happens there. But we'll be back next week with another video. Uh, we'll catch you soon. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.